All right. Very nice to meet both the both of you. Oh, nice to meet you too. And here I have a couple of questions for the both of you. If you could both please introduce yourselves. Um, my name is uh, Kenya Cooper. Um, my name is Andrew Cooper. Thank you. Very nice to meet you. How do the two of you know one another? Um, so we met at, uh, what think, was it? I think, first of all, we, we know each other because we're married, I guess. Yes. Is that what you're asking? <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I mean, if you want us to go more in detail, we can do that. But. Yeah. It's, of course, if you would like to. Go ahead, Kenny. Oh, I was trying to think of the name for that school. Okay, you just want me to say it? Yeah, okay. I forgot. Over here. Okay. Uh, so we actually met. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm like driving, trying to get to a different location. Um, we met in high school. Um, we actually went to two different high schools, um, but they offered a. I guess like extra programs that they didn't offer at the, our home high schools that kind of a, a like combined school and you could go to that school um, for these certain programs and we both happen to be in the program for like graphic arts and uh, that's where we met actually that's amazing. that's a very nice way of meeting um kenya could i ask you a question yeah um, so you became an American citizen in 2020, right? Um, no, it was 2019. 2019? Yes. My apologies. I have 2020 right here. Um, could you describe the process of applying for and securing a medic American citizenship? And how long was that process? Um, so first I had to apply to become a a resident. Uh, we started the process in, do you remember when? I can't remember. Was it 20? Uh, probably 2010. Yeah, 2010. That's right. And uh, we ended up leaving from Mexico. Uh, what was it? 20, 2000? 20, yeah, 2015. So it took us, it took us a while to get there five years and then after that after I became a, a resident permanent resident yes um, I was able to apply for citizenship and I had to wait I think it was two years three years yeah it was three years um, that took a year. yeah oh yes and then the process took a year of itself for me to actually get my uh, documents and everything, my social security. So I guess we could say it took me, what, nine years? Yeah. That is a very long process. Yeah. Um, and Kenya, can you describe your family history specifically regarding immigration and your family's attempt to immigrate to the U.S.? Um, so... I know that my dad came to, he crossed over and came to California first. Um, I don't know the, the year. <laughs> I know he came when I was, I think, yeah, it was the early 90s. I think I was like five, I was five. And then my mom came a few months after him. Um, I stayed with my grandma for a about half a year a little bit more than half a year and then I was able to join them uh, I did not come with any type of uh, you know documents I came also as an immigrant illegal immigrant so um, it was it was a crazy experience because since I was five years old I didn't know what what was going on I just knew I I was going to meet my parents again um, I knew that I got an airplane and I got it on a bus ride and that's basically it. I knew at the end of that 
ride, I was going to see them. So I don't remember anything being, you know, as dangerous or as we see it now. Uh, definitely. Um, thank God that it was my uncle, the one who brought me over. But if it wasn't that situation, I don't think my parents would have allowed me to, or we, we wouldn't have made that, that risk. Yes, it seems, it seems like it's a very high risk. You cannot trust a lot of people to do this kind of process. Um, Andrew, if I may ask you a question. Can you describe how your interest in these larger questions about immigration developed? Um, or how uh, has can, you can you elaborate? Can you elaborate a little bit? Like, I'm not sure I understand the question. Of course. Like, um, how have your thoughts about immigration shifted and evolved over time? Um, you know, we've, we've known each other, uh, I guess I was like 16 when we met and she was 18 or 17 going on 18. And so, you know, at that time as like a teenager, I didn't really, I don't know, it wasn't really on my radar, um, you know, thinking about, uh, you know, immigration or, you know, anything, anything like that. I wasn't really like politically active as a teenager and not that I'm politically active now, but Definitely, I think that, you know, I developed an opinion um, based on our experiences. Um, you know, we, like I said, we met when I was 16. We were married when I was 19. So, and then, you know, had our, our first child um, about six months after we were married. And, uh, you know, I guess at that point, you know, I had been... Uh, you know, just really involved with her family and, and in, you know, the, the community there that they were living in that, you know, I, I knew a lot of people that were in a situation that, you know, they were undocumented immigrants um, or, you know, they're the parents of the family were or whatever. And I think that really shaped my opinion, you know, that um, 99% of, you know, people who, come into this country undocumented are doing so because they're fleeing uh, situations in their home country that are just unbearable and, uh, you know, just in search of a better life, if not for themselves and for their children. Um, and, you know, I definitely feel like that's true uh, with Kenya and, and her parents. Thank you very much for sharing. Mm -hmm. um, what do you both think needs to change when we talk about immigration and about immigrants overall? I think, I think it's still, it's still viewed as, um, I guess I think it's still viewed as people coming over and just uh, taking over jobs that other people want. Uh, and I just don't think, I don't think it's true. I think it's it's most certainly, I guess I have a biased opinion because I am an immigrant, <laughs> but I've seen my parents and they have, they won't take any jobs. They're not able to. So first of all, I feel like as Americans here in the US, we don't see the other side and it's difficult to see how, imagine, I guess, to imagine that we really don't have any options, you know, we're going to take what we can take. And if it's minimum wage jobs, they're going to take it. Um, and, you know, they're not going to be able to, to find that, that higher paying job that is going to offer benefits. Um, so that's definitely one thing that I guess we could learn as a society you know, before we have these, these thoughts that, you know, we ju we're just saying it because we heard it somewhere else and we're just repeating what we hear. So I think that just educating ourselves, I think. Um, 
I'm not really exactly sure what needs to change in the conversation, but I think that, you know, the way that our immigration system is set up, um, it, 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 to me, it seems like a money-making scheme. Like you're, you know, we toiled for almost 10 years and, you know, spent uh, probably, I don't know, over $10,000, not including the money that we had to spend to travel to Mexico in order to, you know, go through the process that we needed to. And, and we ended up, we were in Mexico for five weeks um, because the entire, you know, visa processing system went down. So everything was delayed and, uh, you know, we were stuck there. So, you know, that, that's, that's not a lot of money to the U S government, but that's a lot of money, you know, when you're only making, you know, at the time I was probably making, uh, I don't know, 35, 36, $37,000 a year. So, I mean, you know, $10,000, that's, that's a third of, that was a third of my yearly salary. So uh, it was a huge strain on us and, and really is, you know, as a family has set us back that we're just now starting to kind of recover and we've been married almost 12 years. So, um, you know, it definitely, I think that the system needs to change and how that is, I'm not really sure. Uh, I don't know if I'm in a position to, to have an opinion on that. Um, but you know, I, I think that it needs to be designed a little bit smarter. Um, you know, we need to look around the world at other countries that, you know, ha are embracing immigration, um, you know, and trying to attract people. And what can we do in order to attract those people and, and also make it fair as well? Um, you know, the immigration system, we we had a we had a friend who was from South Korea and, you know, he he came and overstayed a tourist visa, but then ended up with his, you know, permanent residency in just a few years. And then, you know, was, became a U.S. citizen, you know, very quickly. And, um, you know, I just thought it was interesting how that process was really streamlined for him just because his situation was a little different. And, you know, uh, maybe even because his situation was different financially um, versus, you know, my wife who is married to, an American citizen. And it took us, you know, an ex exponential amount of time, you know, more to do the process. And I just, you know, found that interesting, you know, depending on where you're from, depending on your socioeconomic background, your path can be made much easier, even if you don't have necessarily any more skills or training than, than, you know, someone else. So. Absolutely. I agree. It should be a fair opportunity for everyone that just for a select few, as you mentioned. Um, could I actually ask Kenya a question? Yeah. Uh, would you mind if I ask it in Spanish? Oh, of course, I don't, I don't mind. All right. Then, um, ¿cuáles son algunas historias o recuerdos que reflejan lo bueno y lo malo de la experiencia del inmigrante? Hmm. Algunas historias personales. Sí, personales que le hayan pasado a usted, que reflejen algo bueno o algo malo que tuvo usted personalmente con su hmm. experiencia. Algunas, uh, algo que se me viene a la mente, yo pienso, es cuando... Uh, estaba graduándome de, de high school. Um, no sabía dónde iba a ir. Mis demás compañeros sabían exactamente dónde iban a ir, uh, cuáles becas iban a agarrar. Um, mientras a mí me llegaban becas, pero yo sabía que no iba a poder ir. Entonces yo pienso que en ese año es cuando empecé a, a darme cuenta que no era parte de no, yo no era una persona que era parte de, de México ni de los Estados Unidos. Entonces me sentía como si no pertenecía a ningún lado. Um, yo pienso que esa es, eso es lo que me ha, se me ha grabado mucho. Sí, como no poder ser parte de ninguna de las dos, de los dos lugares. Sí, eso, eso es lo que yo pienso que capta lo que es ser um, inmigrante, pero venir um, no como mis papás, porque um, ellos pues no han tenido 
no tuvieron la oportunidad, vinieron a trabajar. Um, entonces, pienso que para muchos de los hijos que vinieron con ellos, eh, pienso que eso es lo que, lo que ellos han de sentir. Muchas gracias por compartir su historia. Sí, de nada. Is there anything you guys would like to add? Any opinions or thoughts you have? I don't, I don't think so. No. And this actually is the end of the questions I had.